The Quiz Kid, brought to you by the makers of Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer for headaches. Alka-Seltzer for acid indigestion. Alka-Seltzer for cold discomfort. Yes, when these occasional ailments make you miserable, take Alka-Seltzer for really fast, really effective relief. And now, Quiz Kids, listen carefully. Here's the puzzler that opens today's question session. We've been hearing a lot about the new look in the last year, but what wild animal has always had the new look? Uh Oh, there's that tricky one. Can you folks at home answer it? Well, you'll have to be on your toes to beat these youngsters. And here they are, the Quiz Kids. And now, and now meet the man who sits at the head of our classroom, the, the jolliest teacher a group of youngsters ever had, our chief quizzer himself, Joe Kelly. Thank you, Bob Murphy, and hello, everyone. We're happy to have you join us for another fast-moving read and writing and arithmetic session here in radio's famous classroom of the air. As usual, you listeners have sent us some very interesting questions, and we're going to get roll call over with in a jiffy and see what the quiz kids can do with them. All right, children, are you ready? Here we go with roll call. Joel? I'm jo- I'm Joel Coverman. I'm 11 years old in departmental in the Vogel School in Chicago. Patrick? I'm Patrick Longtime. I'm 10 years old. I'm Fort Dearborn School in Chicago. Lonnie? I'm Lonnie Lundy. I'm 12 years old and in the seventh grade at Lincoln School in Park Ridge, Illinois. Jack? I'm Jack Rooney. I'm 15 years old and a junior at Loyola Academy in Chicago. Jack, what's happened to your voice since I saw you? <laughs> Change. Yeah, I can say so. It's getting pretty deep. And the quiz kid who came to us recently as the winner in a quiz kid contest conducted by Lions International. He's been a splendid pupil, and we're sorry to say that his appearance on our program today is his last one. Yes, old age has finally caught up with him. <laughs> He's reached his 60th birthday and is being graduated from the Quiz Kids with high honors today. Richard? I'm Richard Cravens. I'm 16 years old, and I'm in the 10th grade at George Rogers Clark High School in Hammond, Indiana. Back to that first tricky question from Mary T. Blumenthal of Rock Island, Illinois. We've been, <coughs> pardon me. We've been hearing a lot about the new look in the last year, but what wild animal has always had the new look? We have three hands up, and Patrick's hand was first. Pat? Well, uh, I think that would be a tagulin, which has long folds on its skin uh, that reach almost down to its uh, uh, feet, and, and, and able to glide. Well, and when uh, it closes up in front of it, it looks like a... That's, uh, down. that's, uh, that's a cute answer, Pat, but, uh, this wild animal uh, definitely has a new look. Uh, Lonnie? Well, uh, this isn't too good an answer, but I think the kangaroo, it has a, a pocket on it, and, uh, on the ladies, their pockets would be on their dresses, and <laughs> the pocket is, uh, rather low down on the kangaroo, so, uh, <laughs> consider it. <laughs> oh, what was the kids think of that, Joe? Well, it would be the snake because the snake's always changing its skin, so it has a uh, new skin practically. Uh, well, new skin almost every time. Well, uh, it's always uh, shedding its skin and growing a new one on. Well, that, that's that's true. Let's see what Jack has to offer. Oh well, the purpose of the new look is primarily to cover more of the body, I think, and. Uh, the turtle's been pretty good at that for years now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you all gave me some very cute answers, but uh, the wild animal that has always had the new look uh, is the G-N-U, the new. I said definitely. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a miss. Uh, it's too bad. That was a little far-fetched, though, this uh, answer. But uh, then, of course, that's the way we start out sometimes. So I'm going to uh, call that a myth, and that means that Mary T. Blumenthal of Rock Island, Illinois, gets a big 239.50 Zenith Radio Phonograph combination right away. That's always Alka Seltzer's reward when the quiz kids miss your question. If they answer correctly, Alka Seltzer sends you one of those fine Zenith Transoceanic portable radios in a handsome luggage case. So get those questions in, folks. Send them to Quiz Kids Chicago. Well, let's try this question from Martha K. Kramer of New York City. If you kids were traveling between the following cities in Germany, would you be going from one occupied zone to another, or would you be staying within the same zone? 
If you traveled from Stuttgart to Hamburg, Joel? Well, they're both in the American zone. Well, so, you, uh, you'd be tra- in the same zone. You'd stay the in the same zone, Jack? Uh, Hamburg is in the British zone. That's right. And I think Stuttgart is in the French or American zone. It's in the south of Germany, I think. Well, uh, it's in the southwest uh, I, Germany. I don't think it's... Uh, it wouldn't be in the same zone. I know that. Well, all right. Now, you said uh, the American or French zone. Which do you definitely French. say? Huh? French. That's wrong. Honey? American. You huh? travel, in... travel from the American. That's the right. You'd cross zone. from the American zone into the British zone. Uh, Stuttgart is in the American zone, and uh, Hamburg is in the British zone. Well... If uh, you went from Leipzig to Nuremberg, Jack, you would be traveling from the Russian zone to the American zone. That's right, because Leipzig is, Leipzig in, the is zone. in the Russian zone. Nuremberg and is Nuremberg in the American, American zone. zone. That's right. Uh-huh. Now, I have a rather unusual assignment here for you quiz kids. Uh, Betty Gibbons of Chino, California, wants you to compose a singing commercial. And since we have all boys in the class today, she wants the product to be something for the ladies. So, you are advertising QK Perfume. You know, QK for quiz kids. QK Perfume. And you must use the melody in the first four lines of the opera aria, the Toreador song from Carmen. Now, our organist, Howard Peterson, will play the melody for you so that you will have the music well in mind. And then you can get to work and write your imaginary singing commercial while you are answering questions. And I'll call on you a little bit later on. Howard, let's have the part of the melody that the kids are to use. That's fine. There you are. Now, you uh, start working on... Uh, Pat, is there something you don't understand, son? Well, uh, what is the name of that, uh, again, QK? Or yes, yes, QK. QK uh, first kid, uh, perfume. QK, perfume. Uh, Richard? Is that the uh, four lines? Or can it be two lines? Well, it, it has to go along with the part of the music we just heard. Well, wait a minute. I'm going to give you a little more chance. See, well, I'll call on you kids a little bit later on. In the meantime, let's get along with more questions. You know, many accidents happen because children run across streets thinking that they can beat oncoming cars. Now, here's a math problem from John Mills of New Orleans, Louisiana. That pretty well shows what your chances are, and it's very appropriate right now because this is National Safety Week. Suppose a child starts running across the street 40 feet wide and can run 6 miles an hour. A car is approaching at only 30 miles an hour, and it can slow down at the rate of 20 feet per second per second. If the driver saw the boy at the instant he left the curb, how far across the street could the boy get in the time it would take the driver to stop his car. Joel? Well, 30 miles per hour is a half a mile a minute, or 26, 40 feet a minute, or uh, 16 to 26, 40, or 44 feet per second. So uh, time for the car to stop would be the speed of the car over the speed of the car slowing down, or yes. 44 over 20, or 2.2 uh, seconds. And uh, if 30 miles per hour was 44 feet per second, then 6 miles an hour, which is a fifth of 30 miles per hour, would be a fifth of 44 feet per second, or 8.8 feet per second. So it would be 8.8 times uh, 2 times 2, or it would be 11 times 11, or 121 times 8 times 2, or 16, with two decimal places, 1,600 plus 336, or 19.36 feet, which isn't even uh, halfway across the street. That's right. Absolutely right. That's wonderful. Boy, oh, boy. What a question and what an answer. And now here's Bob Murphy with a timely observation about the weather. With all the folks who are having colds right now, it seems as though we carried that cold-catching season right over from winter into spring. But you know, getting relief from that cold that may have caught up with you is as easy as ABC. I mean the ABCs of Alka-Seltzer's cold comfort treatment, of course, and they read like this. A, Alka-Seltzer. Start taking it at once for fast relief from that feverish, ache-in-every-bone feeling. B, B B-Y. Beware of drafts. Be sure to get more rest than usual, eat and dress sensibly. And C means comfort. 
The comfort an Alka-Seltzer gargle can give that sore, raspy throat caused by your cold. Easy? You bet. Easy to remember, easy to follow, and you'll surely welcome the ease Alka-Seltzer can give to much of your cold distress. So try it. You'll find when you're caught with a cold, Alka-Seltzer can be worth its weight in gold. All right, kids, here we go with more questions. Mrs. Louise Rich of Oroville, California, is always hearing that the Greeks have a word for it, but never hears what it is. So just to help out, Mrs. Rich, can you youngsters give three things the Greeks have a word for and tell what the words are? Jack? Well, first of all, they have a word for word, and that's logos, uh, logu. And they have a word for uh, virtue, that's arete, arete. They wor- have a word for truth, aleseye, aleseye. And uh, I could go on for a long time. You could, eh? Uh, I'll ask for three. Let's have one more, Jack. Uh, uh, electron, electro, destruction. Uh, Talmos, Talmu, uh, war. Uh, Talos, Talios, the city. Uh, Fuzis, Fuzios, uh, nature. Uh, I, well, I'll give you some answers now. <laughs> well, uh, look, uh, that's, uh, anyway, it's all Greek to me, Jack, so I, uh, thanks a lot. I, I think we... <laughs> Here's a geography question from George Hill, Bremerton, Washington. It really sounds hard to me. If you were piloting a boat up each of these rivers and had orders to unload your cargo at the largest city on the river, at what city would you dock? Now, first... If you were sailing up the Ohio River, Jack? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, that's correct. How about the uh, Dnieper River? Lonnie? I believe that would be uh, Moscow. No, no, no. No? Wouldn't it be Odessa? No. Jack? Yes. Yep, that's right. Yep, Russia. And how about the Po River? Lonnie? That would be, uh, oh, Milan. No. So? Turin. Turin, Italy. That's correct. Uh huh. You know, the uh, nobility or royalty, though not necessarily kings and queens, come in for attention in this question from H. Ehrlich of Chicago. What title of nobility might the following song suggest? I'll get two out of three on this question if you can. Listen carefully while Howard Peterson plays the first one, and you'll find the title of nobility suggested by the words. All right, Howard. <laughs> Patrick? Well, that's ten little Indian boys, and that would be uh, Keith, an Indian Keith. Well, that's a very good answer. Or it might be an Indian Raja. Indian Raja, that's another Or Maharaja, for that matter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maharaja, yeah. And uh, Joel? Well, the very fact that there's ten of them suggests count. That's the answer that I wanted to hear. That's right, count. Because you are counting one, two, three, up like that. That's uh, the first word of the title of the next song contains the coup. Listen. All right, children, what's the, uh, what's the name of that tune? The first word is the clue word. You give up on that one? Well, I'm going to tell you, Hands Across the Table is the name of the selection. So that, uh, Jack? I, I, I thought it was Hands Across the Table, but I couldn't pick any nobility. Oh, I'm I sorry that, I, uh, that you didn't uh, speak up, Jack. Uh, Pat? Well, this may be a little far-fetched, but it might be Hands is a German name, and it might be a German king. <laughs> well, that's a cute answer, Richard. Well, when you think of Hands, you think of your palm, and so you have these, uh, desert uh, maharajas or desert princes. Yes, ah, uh, you need sheep like that. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Well, well that's areas where palm trees are. Well, I was thinking of uh, a slang uh, word for hands. Uh, Lonnie? Well, uh, Duke. 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 Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> well, uh, you uh, you have a chance to say this question now. You gave me one and you couldn't answer the other one. So let's see if we can get this last one. Uh, in the last one, pay particular attention to the last word of the title, which has to do with royalty. Now, if anybody thinks they know the uh, name of that song, hold their hand up, then we can get started on this. What's the name of it? 
You give up? The name is You Ought to Be in Pictures. I said the last word of the title uh, had to do with royalty. Uh, sure, when you think of pictures, you think of a movie queen. Well, uh, so you have a uh, queen as the royalty. That's uh, that's all right. That's a good answer. I was uh, uh, pic- uh, Joe. Well, a picture is generally outside a picture theater. You see, a marquee sort of be a marquee. That's a very good answer. That's right. Uh, I was thinking. Now, when you think of pictures, what uh, what develops in your mind uh, about uh, the word uh, that? Well, photo maybe, but I don't think. Uh... Well, no, I was thinking of print. P R I N T S. <laughs> well, you only got one out of uh, three, so we're going to have to count that one a minute. That means that H. Ehrlich of Chicago, uh, who sent that question in, was a big 239.50 Zenith radio phonograph combination from the makers of Alka Seltzer. Now, kids, just for fun, let us uh, suppose for uh, Carl Canterbury of Moline, Illinois, that the managers of certain National League baseball teams and the conductors of symphony orchestras in the same cities decided to trade places. Then who might be conducting the orchestra and who would be managing the National League team in these cities? The first one is Philadelphia. Joel. Well, Eugene Ormandy would be managing the team and Ben Chapman would be uh, directing the orchestra. That's right. Uh, Lonnie? Also could be Connie Mack who manages the Philadelphia Athletics. Well, now, uh, Lonnie, we're talking in National oh, League okay. terms. Okay. Yes, uh-huh. That's the catch right there. That's the catch. Oh, what am I talking about here? Uh, how about Boston? Jack? Uh, Kusevitsky would be managing uh, the Braves. He just quit last week. Uh, oh, he did. And, uh, and uh, the manager of the Braves would... I mean, the, the uh, conductor of the orchestra would be uh, Billy Southworth. Billy Southworth, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a very cute question. Now, let's have some fun with this question from Helen V. Miller of Limon, Colorado. The names of some varieties of beans can be applied to other things. For example, if it isn't a bean, it could be a kind of candle. The answer to that would be wax. Uh, wax bean, wax candle. You get the idea? Now, let's see what we can do with these. Two out of three on this one. If it isn't a bean, it could be a shade of blue. Lonnie. Navy. Navy, blue. that's and right. Navy, Navy bean. bean. Navy blue, uh-huh. If it isn't a bean, it could be a class of musical instrument. String Richard? Bean. String. string bean. That's right. String instrument, uh-huh. If it isn't a bean, it could be a kind of fish. If it isn't a bean, it could be a kind of fish. What would that be? You've given me two out of three. Let's see if we can get the third part. Patrick? Well, there's a lime of fish. Well, is there really? Yes. Uh-huh. Lime of bean, of course. Lime of... Oh, I get it. Now, don't tell me. Yes, uh-huh. Uh, Lonnie? Oh, I think so. I'm not sure about this, but I, there could easily be a green fish. There's a green snake and a green almost everything else. Well, let's see. Now, uh, Joel? Well, isn't there a cod bean? Then there'd be a codfish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I haven't got all my card here. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're wrong. Well, let's check on that. Richard? Well, what about white fish for white beans? Well, that's all right. I, I was thinking of jelly fish oh. and jelly beans. Oh, <laughs> And now, this next question is for our listeners. And friends, the question is this. How much trouble can a headache cause? Well, just listen. No, Johnny, for the last time, no, you cannot go out and play with the boys this evening. It'll soon be dark, and anyway, you should get busy on your schoolwork. Now, don't bother me anymore. Goodness, dear, do you have to be so cross? Well, what do you expect? I have a hard day at the office, I come home and... Betsy, what have you done to the evening paper? Look, Margaret, it's scattered all over the floor. Oh, Dick, don't make so much fuss. After all, they're just children. You can't expect... I can expect some peace and quiet when I come home with a splitting headache. I'm going upstairs where I can find it. But, dear, wait. Oh, my. He is upset. Thank goodness I've got some extra Alka-Seltzer in the house. You bet. And it's too bad Hubby didn't have some Alka-Seltzer in his desk at the office, and then he could have said goodbye to that headache long ago. But after this... Well, you don't make the same mistake twice, friends. Once you see how fast Alka-Seltzer goes to work on a headache and how soon you begin to feel better, you keep a package handy wherever you are. Now, the best way for you to find out how fast and effective Alka-Seltzer can be is to try it. So here's the thing to do. Visit your drugstore for a 30 or 60 cent size package, and then next time a headache threatens to interfere with work or pleasure, take Alka-Seltzer and see for yourself how speedily it eases your discomfort. 
Thousands of folks say there's nothing quite like it. And we know you'll agree. So remember, when a headache causes grief, that misery can be brief. Take Alka-Seltzer for relief. Now, quiz kids, here's a colorful question from Miss Janie S. Brown of Jonesboro, Georgia. She says that certain men in history might have worn appropriate colors when performing their historical feats. First, who might have worn midnight blue? Lonnie? The midnight ride of Paul Revere. That's right. Because Paul Revere. That's right. This is my children. This is uh, the anniversary of his ride. That's right, Lonnie. It was, Just, it was uh, in 18, or 1775, his ride, April 18th. 173 years ago, mm-hmm. tonight, midnight. Mm-hmm. Very good. Now, who, who might have worn apple green? Lonnie again. Well, it uh, could be Johnny Appleseed. Who, could be. Uh, that's Ohio right. pioneer who threw apple seeds. Yes, uh-huh. Year. And uh, Richard? I believe that could also be Robin Hood, since he had the green protective coloring while he was in the forest. Well, I think uh, it was a different uh, color green than other than apple green. Was it uh, Lincoln green, wasn't it, or something like that? Joe? Well, it could be William Tell. William Tell. That's a very good one. That's right. Now, here's the question I've been waiting for. It is now time to hear those stupendous commercials the two quiz kids have been composing during the program. Let's see. You were to write a singing commercial for QK Perfume and use the melody in the first four lines of the Toreador song from the opera Carmen. Now, this ought to be a lot of fun. Who wants to start it off? Richard? Yeah, I'll start. QK Perfume is the best in the land. It, can, it contains extract of roses and zinnias, and it helps you get your man. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very good, Richard. Joel? Try QK perfume. It'll stick with you. It smells a lot, too. When you smell it, you'll say, P.U. <laughs> <laughs> Jack? <laughs> QK perfume is the very best perfume. Women use it always, and men love it, too. They, is there oh. more to that? Oh, are you going, you got, do you have more? Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. They are not called by the lethal fume. It sure leads to Bill and Cool. Oh, the best part, we almost left out. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir, that was a very fine bass solo, too, Jack, by the way. Uh, Lonnie? So, uh, I got four lines, too. QK perfume makes the lady swoon. QK perfume, QK perfume. It has a most delightful smell. She will say that it's me- or you will say that it's swell. The swell, yeah, that is swell. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Patrick. Well, every sleeve you just QK every night and day to make your sweetheart swoon. You QK perfume. Well, I tried that. Now those. Those were all good. Yes, sir, those were all very, very fine. Now, this question is from Mrs. Vernon Lundine of Renovo, Pennsylvania. What does one of you quiz kids have in common with the author of the Uncle Remus stories? Lonnie? Joel Chandler Harris, that is. And that's and? Uh, Joel Copperman. That's right. Kid. They both have the same first name, Joel. Uh-huh. Fulton Castleberry of Echalaca, Montana, is often impressed by the remarkable things that children of your age do today, but he points out that we're apt to forget there were remarkable children in the past, too. He asks what unusual things each of the following did when he was a, a quiz kid age. First one is David Farragut back in 1810. Patrick? Well, uh, didn't um, Farragut, um, he was a naval uh, hero. I don't remember exactly uh, um, what... Well, he was a little boy when this particular thing happened, see. Uh, Joe? Well, he was a midshipman on the uh, uh, Essex, and when the Essex captured a uh, British ship, he was he was chosen captain, and he was captain of the ship, and he brought it into port. Yes, And well, he was only 12 years old. Uh, that's a very, very good. At the time that he entered the United States Navy uh, as a midshipman, uh, he was nine years old. But that's a very good answer you gave me there. How about the next one here? Uh, Stephen, the French shepherd lad back in 1212. Joel? Well, he led uh, the Children's Crusade. That's right. That's absolutely right. Now, Peg Pyle of South Bend, Indiana, says we hear a lot today about a third party, but in fiction, who was the third party in each of the following groups? First, 
Dora, David, and whom? Pat? Well, that would be, um... Uh, Nancy, I think it was. No. That was in David Copperfield. Well, you're uh, yeah, you're in the right book, but you've given me the wrong name. De- uh, Dora, David, and whom? Joe? Agnes. Agnes. What was her last name? Well, uh, I believe it was... I don't know. Dora's Maybe beside a... the point, it's, uh, the name was uh, Warwick. Agnes. And, uh, well, uh, Dora's last name was Fenlow, and David's last name, of course, was Copperfield. That's right, uh-huh. How about Rowena, Athelstan of Koningsberg, and... Patrick? Well, that would be Ivanhoe. Ivanhoe. And Ivanhoe by that's, you. that's right, Ivanhoe. That would be the third party. Alice Woodruff of Los Angeles wants you kids to make up some two-line jingles in which you rhyme the name of a person with the name of a city. For example, you might say, uh, let's see if I can think one real quick here. I saw a Hattie in Cincinnati. You know, that's the idea. Jack? I saw uh, John in, in Bond. Bonn and Bonn? Well, uh, what city are you? Bonn in Germany. That's the city Bonn in Germany. Oh, I beg your pardon. B-O-N-N-E. I wasn't looking at far. Uh, Lonnie? B-O-W-N-N, I believe the spelling of it is. I, uh, and also, it could be John in Boston. That's not too good, though. Well, that's and, all right. That's the general Also, writing. John in Plymouth Town. Or Plymouth Town, uh-huh. Anything with a town in it. Yes, Patrick? I saw Agnes in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you could say now. Let's see what, oh, you could say, "Well, I saw Lou and Sue." You Lou, leave out in the city. Yes, you know, that's right. You could do that. Well, sometimes you have to do those things. See, uh, Richard. Oh, you could say, "I saw Pierre in Pierre," because there's a city Pierre and there's a boy's name Pierre. You could say, "I saw Mary in Gary." Mary and Gary. Yes, I, I saw. Know. I saw Harris in Paris. Harris in Paris. They were certainly hopping around here, Lonnie. Well. uh... Oh, getting back to what Richard was doing about the, like, Pierre for Pierre, it could be I saw Bismarck in Bismarck, or I saw Lou in San Lou, San which is Lou. short for St. Louis, of course. Yes, uh-huh. And, uh... All right, Jack? And see. Bill in Louisville, that's what I was saying. Bill in Louisville, yeah. Lynn in Berlin, and, uh, Mary in Tipperary, and... Mary in Tipperary, Joel? Well, getting back to what, uh, Richard started, you could say, well, I saw Nancy and Nancy, yes, in France. Oh, I see. Pat? Well, then I saw Roscoe and Moscow. <laughs> Roscoe and Moscow. <laughs> 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 well, children, as usual, the old bell means our time is up, so class is over for today. I know you're all anxious to see your report cards, and we should have them in a minute, for the judges are already adding up today's scores. While we're waiting, here is a message Mother will want to hear. Mothers, are you having trouble getting your children and your family to take their vitamins every day? Try giving them one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsules. Each one-a-day brand multiple capsule contains all the vitamins for which the amount needed for grown-ups and children has been established. What's more, one capsule every day is all they take. And one-a-day brand multiple vitamin capsules are low in cost. A full two-month supply for only $2. Ask your druggist for one-a-day brand vitamins. Good for growing children and adults. Remember, for vitamins the easy way, for vitamins the thrifty way, the brand you want is one a day. And now, here we have the results of today's question session quiz. Kids, remember, though, whether you win or lose, you all receive a $100 savings bond from the makers of alka to help you with your future education. Now then, here are your report cards. The judges say our entire class missed two questions this afternoon, and except for Richard Cravens, who is graduating today, Joel is first... Jack, second, and Lonnie, third. So you three will report to class next Sunday to compete with David Prohaska, age 11, and a new quiz kid, Nancy McClary, age 12. And we hope to see all the listeners there occupied, too, so plan to be with us. Won't you, friends? So until next week, then, same time, same station, this is Joe Kelly dismissing the quiz kids. Goodbye, kids. Bye, Bye Kelly. Kelly. Listen to the quiz kids every week and listen to Alka Seltzer's News of the World every Monday through Friday over most of these NBC stations. This is Bob Murphy speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm-hmm.